Okay, so uh, welcome everybody, welcome to uh, everybody present in the room um, and people zooming in and on Facebook. So um, this is the um, meeting of the Infrastructure and Services Committee. Uh, I'm Brian Dillow, Deputy Chair, um, standing in for Russell Keys. So I just ask uh, Russell to do a karaoke for opening. from um, Councillor Keyes and the others. Our others. So if somebody like to move apologies. Thanks. Well, all those in favour, uh, please Thanks, Greg. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carry. Sorry, can Greg second? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Can we all need a... Uh, I, I was required by... Uh, Thank you. Uh, has anybody got any conflicts of interest to declare today? No conflicts of interest. We'll move on to public forum. Uh, we haven't got anybody from the public forum today, so. Um, we could just be a public forum just for a month. Okay. Um, and uh, just the big calls, I'd like to really thank people for uh, the work that's been done on the road around um, Dillonero. A couple of the signs, but um, uh, lights as, uh, as well as in the turning bay. And, and it's been a, uh, it's set our, our people there. Um, there's concerns about their safety, and that's all been taken 
into consideration. So just on behalf of Perunio Lengi, and I uh, would really like to thank uh, Cadden Judiciary Council and all those that have uh, been a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. So we'll move on to the confirmation of the minutes of the uh, meeting held um, 12th February. I'll just get a quick read through them and if there is any discussion, page one. <coughs> Page two. And page three. Has anybody got any discussion or anything that was, that they were at, at that meeting, any um, things that they were bring up? If not, I'll now move, as I was present, I'll move that those minutes were true and correct record. Can I please have a second? Thank you, Rob. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Um, we move on to reports and um, Parks and Reserves activities. Clinton, shall I come forward and present your report? Thank you. Um, I take it everyone's read the report. Um, any questions? Anybody got any questions for Clint? Yeah, no, obviously after the pandemic, um, there's an opportunity for things to grow. <laughs> an opportunity to get around. Um, look at that uh, in terms of getting that kind of more underwater. How's that all gone? Getting back up to speed where we appreciate we're probably two months behind where we should be. So we're behind on most of our capital projects, but so we've been catching up on a bit of maintenance, as indicated in the report. But um, yeah, um, what I can speak to as well with going forward from where we are at today, the goals that we've set ourselves to achieve with, with regard to what parts of the is going to achieve for the town. Is that, um, we're hitting, we're trying to Achieve, we're trying to get some gardens planted in town. That's our goal for spring, so some sort of spring display. But so we all, that's where we're at today, given, given regard to where we were at in the past. So we're on a big catch up mode at the moment with the maintenance, mowing, weeding, spraying, as well as completing some capital projects. But we're behind on several other capital projects, and so things are going to get so that's where we're at. Yeah, I, I just want to acknowledge how well things went during during um, you know the, the different levels and how responsive you were still able to be. Because you know I was getting calls and I was forwarding it through, and um, yeah, uh, you know it was certainly responded to straight away. So thank you, and and just the feedback to the community. I know all the councillors agree. It's just um, outstanding. So that comes down to a good team and well organised. So thank you. Well, from my part, from my end, I also want to um, pass on uh, from our team. Acknowledgement of uh, support that we've had from the both of us. Uh, thank you. It's, it's um, um, created a, an environment that um, helped the, the well being of our crew over there. So, um, so that's very much appreciated you know, given the um, circumstances that our whole country is in at the moment. And pressure that's on with employment and things like that. So the support that has been given to our staff and, and uh, speaking of my team from um, Council, uh, very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> um, yeah, again, a vote of support. Um, I've passed this on privately. I understand that the team has been told privately, um, but I think it's worth restating publicly. Um, I, I'm well known for having dogs and taking dogs for walk. My wife and family, we all go out walking with the dogs. And I can't overstate how pleased and how elated I was to be um, socialising and have someone say to me, um, referring to them walking their dogs along the roads and stuff about how courteous council vehicles were, always slowing down, um, you know, and being mindful of them with their dogs on leads. So to hear that, you know, from a member of the public uh, was, was awesome. And I think the whole team can take some, 
some um, satisfaction in knowing that their efforts are being noticed by the community um, and, and we've got a good reputation. So well done and keep it up. Thanks, Rob. I've just got a couple of um, things I um, would like to note. Um, can't I see um, Keep Cutting Beautiful Group uh, back, um, back planting um, the capitals? I saw them last Friday up in Northern End, which is really cool. They're uh, back into it, which is um, really good for a, a group of um, older residents, retired people, and um, really keen to um, enhance the town. So. 1,500 daffodils gone in by the look of it, so it's really good. Um, the other thing I've got, um, the um, parks, uh, the toilets, sorry, at Carrington and Memorial, um, they've been cleaned three times a day, which is really good. Um, really happy about that. Um, just one question, what's the normal for that? Is it once, once, once daily, and it'll carry on until we, obviously, this three times a day will continue until level two, and then it'll be reviewed. So, we are just uh, mate, we are um, following the same regime as the other three towns, so everyone's you know, following the same standard. There's no difference what's happening here at the radio and master. That's good. Um, and just one other thing, I'll just report on the Lions 50 year project, the, the bike safety track. Um, we have just received um, all the, the giveaway and the signage, um, which will be going up in the next few days. So um, that will all be in place. Um, and, and I understand the um, traffic lights are in and operational or ready to operate. So that's really good. So we're still progressing on that. Still progressing. So it's cool. We still got um, some ambient lighting going, just proceeding quite from that. Brian, I've, I've just got a couple of questions for Clint. If that's all right. Yeah. Um, just just to reinforce what um, the other elected members have said about how how well the team, the parks team, and everything have been doing. It's great. Um, it's really good to see the re um, utilisation of the steam equipment for cleaning and everything that you're doing. That that's just fantastic to make better use of it. And um, I'm just wondering how the, the um, has the riparian planting been finished in um, Booth's Creek? Completed yesterday. Fantastic. Yes. Um, we've still got signage to erect, and we've still got a doggy doop in and um, bag holder to erect there. So it's still a work in progress, but the riparian planting is completed by mulching. Great, great stuff. And I know Brian's already received a message from uh, a member of or a resident who's um, absolutely wrapped with it. So great stuff. Yeah, positive feedback also from um, Deirdre, Deirdre Flynn, who was the spokesperson for the Villa Estate um, community. So um, we have very positive feedback from here and um, Hillary, so, which is uh, yeah, good. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I'd, yeah, I'd just like to say that, yes, I did receive an email yesterday from Hillary, which is really good. Um, um, good, positive stuff. And um, obviously, the residents around there are happy with what we're doing. Um, and um, it's saying, um, yeah, it's part of the project that's going forward. So that's good. And so um, thanks to all the officers and um, the workers that have done the work around there. It's really good. Clinton is team. Can I make a comment on that too, uh, folks? Um, what I've observed with uh, when we are installing new paths, um, the uptake, the use of them is immediate and uh, noticeable. So what I've noticed is wherever we're putting the new paths are being utilised immediately, obviously being appreciated by the community. That's an observation I've made as soon as we made that piece for the park. It's the same thing with our work park as well. We've been using it already. There's no other discussion or um, questions for Clint. I'll um, move the recommendations. We have um, one recommendation that the Infrastructure and Service Committee receive a report. So I'll move it and second it. I'll move that and thank you, Rob. I will second it. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carried.
Okay, we move on to um, the water supply and protect um, activities report. So, would you like to come and present the report, please? <coughs> Um, I'll take your all laws. <coughs> Questions? Just one, the faulty water meters, were they faulty new ones or old ones discovered faulty as when they were being taken out? Just the faulty old ones. Faulty old, cool, perfect. <coughs> How many years has it been since the uh, original ones were put in? Probably around about eight years, eight to ten years. Do you foresee that the uh, next upgrade is in ten years, or do you think these smart meters are smart enough for a long time? The um, life expectancy was removed. So, uh, Carlton started putting them in 2002, 2003, and they just been completed for probably a little bit longer than eight years ago. Okay. So they, they generally have a life cycle of 15 years, yeah. and the smart meters have a battery, an indoor battery in them, which is supposed to last 15 years. So at the end of the 15 year term, we'd be looking at replacing them. I was just wondering if they were programmed Not so they need to have to replace them. No, okay. they're silver batteries, so yeah. no, yeah. I, I'd, I'd imagine they're still mechanical, so they'll still have a wearing parts inside them. Yeah, yeah. And they cost them to repair, just throw them away. Yeah. And it's just been an example to the other towns and what it up and keeping up putting up meters in the same with water, all of those things that have come because of it. And so, uh, and, uh, just uh, if we taking the next level of <coughs> thinking with with meters. Uh, then uh, just looking at what some of the intended consequences in terms of good things, uh, but there's sometimes an unintended consequence that it can be good or bad, um, but just thinking about what those are and, and, and uh, love to uh, be thinking of or hearing a bit more about them after they've you know, installed and kind of ironed out some problems and see how they go. Thank you, Robert. Any other questions for someone? It's a pretty straightforward report and a good report. So. There's no other questions or discussion. I will uh, move it for recommendations. The, the Infrastructure and Service Committee received a report. Could I have a mover and a seconder, please? Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Rob. Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carry. Thank you, Sylvan. Good you. report. Move on to Rumahanga Roads. Uh, monthly report. Uh, jump in. Thank you. I think that we've got a report. Any questions? Yeah. Anybody got any questions for um, JP on this uh, really comprehensive report? Only one from me. Um, on the outstanding work, the footpaths <laughs> in Carterton, which footpaths are those? Which roads? Uh, Again, I can't remember, but um, uh, the resurfacing was one was Plimsoll Street at the time with a new path that you put mm. through the reserve. Uh, I think Gallagher Street, the, 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 they've been selected off a um, survey that was done last year. So we've got surveyed the whole town, um, and then con condition rated it and taken the worst condition rating scores and worked on those. Um, it's been delayed because uh, we couldn't do re renewal work through lockdown. So, um, and unfortunately, um, we can't get to it before the end of this month. So, it's moving into next year. Okay. Let's go on question for JP Wall on um, footpaths. The footpath repair program, um, I, presume it, I presume it's ongoing. Um, 
over the lockdown, I've been doing a fair bit of walking and, and noticing a few patches um, that need doing. Um, is it a, is it ongoing or is yes? Like we do uh, so much as renewing, resurfacing yes. the whole street. Yeah, um, and there's um, sections that get identified from the inspections. Yeah, so then it's just ongoing for yeah. 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 Or uh, I do rely on. Feedback from the public, so you know, sort of traps on stuff that we've missed. Okay. Yeah. Also, the um, cycling walking advisory group has some report too, and it's having having discussions too. Thank you. Just got a question. So, um, in the public forum, you know, we hear that I think uh, the road improvement in terms of um, a whole range of things that have happened around the Marae, um, and Part of it is connected to the public road. So the you kind of pull away bay and the light is so that people can pull it there and come across uh, to uh, a private road. And so I'm, I'm wondering about the uh, connection between the, the impact that a private road has on public roads. And, and uh, we, look, we're, we're really grateful about that. But we also want to lessen our impact should we plan for more private roads in the future. And so um, perhaps talking with you before we put in a private road might be the best consideration as opposed to what well, you know, we put in a road and then like, we find out later on that we have to put out there. Is that really um that be a considerable thing? Yeah. So uh, we, we have put some comment to or some recommendations to and then it's put through a consenting process. Cool. So because we've got a, another consenting process coming up then, um, we think that roading might be a difficulty. So for example, if we've got 100 beds and we're able to feed 200, could take 500. I might again be quiet, and so just trying to think about how we can best do that rather than uh, uh, cause problems in the long run. So uh, those are just uh, just trying to get uh, some understanding around that connection between private roads and public roads. Uh, one, so that we can minimise, but two, when we look over at private roads, uh, how we might think about them in the future for people on this. Always have a chat, right? Always, yeah. 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 So I think conversation would have to be needed. Come to some agreements on everything and get it, get it sorted out before it gets too deep, basically, would be the way that I would sort of usually keep that in mind, right? Yeah, that's conversation. Yeah, it could be a shovel ready. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, any other. Um, Comments or discussion on um, JP or Dave's report here? Yeah, JP, just just one from me. Just wondering, um, is the uh, curve and channel between Lincoln Road and Pembroke Street? Uh, I'm guessing the date's gone out a little bit on that. I'm hoping to get it done this month. Um, the two culverts are getting replaced uh, shortly. I'm meeting with Paul Hogan after this meeting, um, and then. The curb channel will go in um, before June 30. Thank you. Um, that's a two stage thing, just so you understand. So the curb will go in and the road pavement will be done next construction season. So you might think it's a little bit disjointed, but um, yeah, it's just work in progress. Steve, answer your question, obviously. Thank you. Okay. okay, if there's no other um, discussion or questions, um, I'll put the recommendations that the committee receive the report. Can I have a mover and a second, please? Thanks, uh, Rob. Thanks, Steve. Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carry. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to waste water.
um, in solid waste report. Uh, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Morning, all. Morning. Um, it's taken a spread. Anyone got any questions on the answer? I uh, just want one question, Gary. Under this, under five question, um, we're currently sourcing a local contractor to undertake concrete work at transfer station. Is that um, have you sourced the local contractor? And got that I've, under control? I've got one that's on I'm going to talk to. I've got them through that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Support the local businesses if you can. That's really good. Anybody else got any other questions or discussion? Oh, um, Brian, I, I just had one um, under four wastewater. I was just trying to work out whether there were some words left out. Um, plans are in place ready for the wet weather to arrive in which we will end up ceasing irrigation. What, wouldn't it then say and begin discharging into the Mungatiri stream for the winter with the high flows? Yeah, that's basically what has happened now. We uh, stopped discharging on the... Uh, uh, stopped irrigating 22nd of May, 21st of May, sorry. And then we went to the stream on the 25th. So uh, we yeah, waited for the run. Our biggest problem was that the, um, the stream was so low that we couldn't uh, discharge. We had to keep irrigating. Um, and then we had the rain that's Helped us out. Yeah, sorry, it's just the way that I was reading it, it was like you're ceasing irrigation into the Mungatiri stream for the winter and early spring months. I think you're right, Steve. I think it just needs that extra word <laughs> ceasing yeah. irrigation and commencing <laughs> discharge. discharge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah understand. Thanks, Steve. Any other questions or discussion for Gary? Everybody happy? I just said good morning, Gary. Um, so I, I, May 21st, 20, 21st, seems, you know, a longer than normal and yeah. um, the, the um, driest uh, year we've had on record. Um, it's going to impact the action kind of... We, we had a um, bit of rain and early April, which we stopped uh, irrigating at the Winter Stream, but then a couple of weeks later we seemed to dry it out and we had to go back. To, uh, so it was good, it was good with the, uh, with the lower flow, we could irrigate for a couple of days and then rest it, you know, so we didn't have any ponding, so it was, it was good. It's been Everyone at home didn't increase the amount of um, liquid coming through, uh, did it? Yeah. No, it's been, um, yeah, it's good since the Lincoln Road job's been, yeah, it's really made a hell of a difference to obviously that. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. No other discussions. I um, will um, move the recommendations of the Infrastructure and Service Committee receive the report. I have a mover and second, I will move. And Rob, can you see the move? All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against, carry. Okay, we've got a wastewater treatment plant upgrade <laughs> update from Matt. So Matt, yeah. thank you, Matt. Good morning. I think you've got a chance to uh, put that in the report. Yeah. I seem to be the only one that gets photos this one. <laughs> well done. Uh, any questions? It's a question about the weapons. I'm trying to see <laughs> um, and, and you know, from, from that picture, uh, it, it looks uh, pretty good. Uh, any other comments you'd like to make about it? I was looking quite different now. I mean, that was taken on the 23rd of March. Yeah. Uh, so that was taken pretty close to completing those new drains where you can see no vegetation at all. Yeah. So those drains in there, that's just started to fill up now uh, at the time of that photo. But now that water's actually going right the way down. 
We were expecting, we talked to the regional council about how long it might take to establish a, a, an amiable invert in there, so there was an expectation that it would take a fair amount of time for it to seal up. Uh, but Gary's been down there, the boys have been down there, and just making sure that there's any leakage in there that they're resolving that. It is looking really good. So ne next report I'll put in a photo showing that, that the water actually passing all the way through. So that system's working really well. Thank you, Matt. Um, just just one question um, for um, for more the, the, the people um, zooming in and on Facebook. Um, the 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 progress that's being made at this stage, can you just give us a bit of an outline on the progress and, and um, how we're tracking? Um, it's um, you know, a lot of the public think, uh, yeah. are asking a lot of questions, so yeah, can you just give us a bit of an update on that? Yeah, well, COVID um, caused some delays. Uh, it was really fine weather, and um, there's some significant work to, that could have been done during that period, so it's um, uh, slow the processes down. Um, wet weather that we have does slow uh, some of the earthworks um, down. Uh, at the moment, we've got um, concrete works to complete, uh, which is not too much of an issue in, in this type of weather. Uh, and we're waiting for the liners to arrive, which uh, we're hoping to see them arrive in the next few weeks. Uh, so, yeah, we have had some wet weather recently over the weekend, last week, so that's uh, dropped our working days on the earthworks down. Uh, but I anticipate uh, coming going forward, the next couple of months should still remain dry until we get that uh, rain probably from around the end of July. So I anticipate that we should be getting pretty close to completion by the end of July. Thank you, Matt. So um, yeah, the, the landscape will obviously change down there in the next couple of months. Um, so that's that's really good news, and um, we'll see some some arrangement with the permitting. <laughs> yes. So this is a big. Uh, uh, has anybody else got any questions for um, Matt for move the recommendations? No, well, that's good. Um, so the re we only got one recommendation and the, the Infrastructure and Services Committee received the report. I'll move that and uh, get Rob to second it. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Kerry. Thanks for the report, Matt. Very good. Um, really good visual photos. So Thank you. Now we move on to the last report, Assets Engineer and Spatial Services. Tony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is interesting. This is the first time I've done a report for this group. So pick it apart for all of them. <laughs> I'd just like to recognise your, your big head here, uh, the graphic. We might even watch the photographs from the previous report. <laughs> I, I, um, yeah, but I, I would like to do some comparison to the previous report and, and this report, and not by any kind of um, differences between the reports. That, that, in terms of substance, but um, so normally uh, the infrastructure is, is um, had some part of the name of this report is a little more about the uh, acid engineering, it's kind of the hard infrastructure. But the interesting part is the next part is the spatial services. And so, in the spatial services, something uh, amongst perhaps environmentalists is um, something called blue and green infrastructure and so uh, and you know, to be fair uh, your figure points to some of the green infrastructure that's alongside um, the main review in terms of trees etc and just thinking in the previous photographs 
it is some blue infrastructure in terms of wetlands, being the things that are coming up out of that. Um, sorry, uh, in terms of plants being the green infrastructure. Um, is, is, and then in terms of um, that's in, under consideration, uh, climate change, which is creating all the reasons. Um, and there's a whole range of work that's working towards that. And I'm just wondering how much of that is the part of your consideration? Uh, when, I, when I talk about social services, it's, it's in relation to our local government. Uh, we, uh, we use it mostly as a tool to capture our assets. And so they are hard assets, they're not... Um, uh, we have moved a bit into the parks and reserves side of things and have started to capture our assets which are there, which are the, the green assets we're talking about. Um, they, they use the same tools but there are a slightly sort of different aim or target at the end of them. So uh, uh, we've started out by looking at what's the best benefit for the cost yeah. and, and to capture and know what our uh, valuable assets are, uh, monetary assets are, is what we've done to start with. So uh, the spatial services now moves on in my, in, in my plan, it moves on to um, try and capture the uh, environmental stuff, which is what you'll see that we've done in the Act for Parks and Reserves with a capture of three trees. And that sort of feature, that, those sorts of tools can move on to do other things as well, so buildings and other, other assets that are there. Um, we are not we're not running at the same level or, or um, requirement as GW with their environmental uh, spatial services. So they they also have hard assets, but they, they, they do a lot more in the environmental game than we do. And, um, in the Warwick, we we're quite lucky with the, with the GIS or the spatial services team working quite closely. So in the, most, uh, in the recent event, um, uh, there were three mapping and three spatial uh, I was on standby for the whole way through, and uh, uh, it wasn't the kind of event that needed our tools, so, um, but we were there just in case, so if it, it escalated, then we were going to go for a week before. And that's, uh, I mentioned that in the, in the report as well. Uh, the, the, the people want data, people want stuff that you can trust, and to make the decisions that are think what you're saying, so relative to that. So, Put it all in one place where everybody has access to it. Make it. Uh, we often we often talk about the one source of truth. Make it a, 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 a bucket full of information that people can pull apart. Yeah, I'm kind of interested in their pathway when you that you've outlined. So, so I don't expect that we're at any that. Uh, I don't know that it's a great comparison, but Greater Wellington might be at. Um, and I don't have this as an endpoint either. But in terms of if we are working towards some of those things, just as you have one, then if we if a wellbeing budget carries on, and the treasury put up mm -hmm. the standards framework, then there's a wider um, costing or return on investment wider than an economic return on investment. So. Like you've already said, yeah. a natural return on investment, and that uh, thinking about um, how natural capital is, is monetized, um, thinking about um, how social um, well-being is, uh, seeing what our return on investment in social well-being, and so the social uh, capital is a part of that as well. I mean, I'm not expecting that that's where we are, but it's actually treasury's not there either. Um, and so just if we have a pathway that's progressing along that way, you can see how you can connect to these things pretty easily. There's some of the tools that are available within, within town plan, for example, you know, the zones, uh, it's not, not defining that there is a zone, but using using these tools to do, to uh, uh, encourage that. You look at these tools as being, yes, and don't, let's use this information to so, uh, Bird Park in the south of Carlton is a good example. Here's a, here's a park that's been built in the southern part of Carlton to service that area. Yeah. There, was, where there was really nothing to put on. Town planning, if we use these tools, we'll follow to that straight away. Um, so, so if you're the ribbon, the, sorry, Gary. So, the tools that are generally used by city councils, yeah. and um, I think smaller councils like ours have a feel for what's right and wrong. 
without the committee and the, and the, and the 12 person team of the background telling you what to do. So, I mean, as an example, Parks and Reserves and one of the city council themselves have eight mapping specialists working on <coughs> the city. Imagining that if you want doing the work of 12, you want some kind of recompense. Um, I just got one question for you, uh, Tony. Uh, Frederick Street um, water storage project. Um, there has been discussion going on with adjoining um, residents, etc. Is progress going on? Right yeah, so, uh, uh, initially, I Called two, two 750 cubic metre um, tanks uh, on the, the northern property uh, adjacent to where the tanks are now, the reservoir is under. But when, you, when we looked at the site and, and, and saw the effect that it might have on the, on the immediate neighbour uh, in Charles Street, um, it was significant for them. It was going to cast, it would have been legal, but it was going to cast a big set shadowing across their property. So we went down and had a discussion with them, so on the moment, a discussion with them before lockdown. And uh, not knowing the lockdown was coming, and um, and we sort of compromised a wee bit. It's a difficult, the difficult sites there. Those parcels of land are long, narrow, and don't accommodate the ground objects parked on them. So, um, so 750 cubic metre might still be on the limit. But we're looking at that we have um, two, three. Into the cement road as a paper road or unformed road. So there's, there's spots here but in the same situation where we don't want to shadow people that have nice rooms in the hills. Um, so I'm just, just trying to be considerate at the moment. Thanks, Tony. Um, you know, obviously, we can involve, involve the, um, the ratepayers and, and residents down that area um, right at the start. And yeah, it'll be a win-win for everybody. Yeah, these customers pay our wages. Thank you. Yeah. Any other? Just uh, Rob. Yeah, Tony, they um, they're quite they've got <coughs> precast concrete tanks. Um, are they a lot more expensive than to construct than uh, than the wooden ones? Uh, my initial figures were about four to five times the cost of right. some of uh, those tanks. So yeah, that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> there are advantages and disadvantages with some of the stage tanks. So. Well, my only reason for asking is if the cost was a bit, if the cost was a bit closer, yeah. then that's partially right. burying the concrete ones would potentially reduce its profile. Yeah. Yes, there's advantages to that certainly. Uh, we'd have to then. Uh, uh, Recheck the existing ones that are on site because you've got their heights and the and um, or replumb them so that there's there's no visible connection between them or there's a, a managed connection between them. But four or five times the cost is well a big yeah, difference. We want to get bang for buck in the planning stage, so yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Adi? No, I'll wait for recommendations. Is anyone recommendation that the Infrastructure and Services Committee receive the report? I'll move that to Steve. We'll second that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Kerry. <coughs> thank you. That's the um, end of the report. So I'd just like to um, thank all the officers. Um, the reports and the work that goes into these are um, really good, um, really good reports all the way through and um, really good explanations um, and answering the questions. So just like to compliment the, the officers for that. So to um, conclude the meeting, I'll just ask Ra to um, conclude with a karaoke. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. um, Kia
Thank you for everybody uh, for attending and um, zooming in and watching online. So I'll just declare this um, meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you.